okay and application packaging um i have uh, completed a couple of certification as well for sccm for active directory you know mcsa mcsc mcts and i have completed certification on itil so these are my uh expertise but my core expertise is sccm okay and application packaging these are two, these are the two core expertise i have so that is about me i would like you guys to introduce yourself and uh, tell me about your uh, background what you have done so far <clears throat> what is your experience what is your exposure on so far and what is the expectation out of this training ready uh, well uh, i don't have any previous experience with the uh, technologies like uh, this is my first job i'm going to try now and uh, I, i wish like to go with the cm for the basic level mm -hmm. but why have you chosen scm because i don't like huh? I don't like coding. Okay. okay. I'm not interested in that side. That's the reason I choose this way. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Pramod? <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Hi, uh, my name is Pramod. Uh, I have an experience in SAN administrator. So I worked in Bank of America last mm -hmm. one year. So recently, my project has been <clears throat> ended. So I am looking for uh, the system administrator role. So I have knowledge on the Active Directory as well as the Linux, and uh, <clears throat> and I have knowledge on the system administration also. So so recently, there was no open position on this uh, storage side. So when I saw in Dice, there's a lot of open position on SCM. So uh, I have thought that so why can't to be moved to the SCM because every organization using the system administration <coughs> that's mm -hmm. why I was interested into this field. Okay, good. So for ready because you don't like coding job, so that's the reason you have chosen SCM. Good, and promote because. There are so many opportunities for SCCM. You would like to move your profile from storage to SCCM, right? Yes. <clears throat> yeah. And basically, I have some knowledge on the Active Directory as a the, the server side also. So why can't I thought that why can't I move to the, the system administration side? Yeah. Right. And already I have spoke to you right regarding the yes, why yes. I am why I choose this one yeah yeah okay so Microsoft System Center Configuration Manager we call it SCCM so basically it is System Center Configuration Manager right what is SCCM? So SCCM is basically enterprise device management. Be SCCM is basically enterprise device management solution provided by Microsoft. This is a premier solution from Microsoft. Microsoft released this SCCM long way back. And the name of SCCM previously, we used to call it as SMS. That was released in 1994. SMS is nothing but system management server. So any system, uh, any server who is managing the devices, you know, previously, we did not have such servers who can manage the devices. Microsoft released 
this SMS in 1994 and uh, the version was SMS 1.0 later they improved you know they added some more functionalities and they changed the version from 1.0 to 2.0 3.0 then in the year 2003 they released SMS 2003 that was there in the year 2003 this was a major hit multiple organizations started using it because this gave them very good solution to manage the devices okay then microsoft released sccm 2007 so this also had some versions like sp1 sp2 sp3 right but seven so sccm is nothing but system center configuration manager system center sccm is system center configuration manager system center is a family and configuration manager is one of the products inside that family so in system center you have other families as well, other products as well like scom scom operation manager scvm virtual machine sccm configuration manager so microsoft put this in system center family and the main product name is configuration manager so in the year 2007 they released SCCM 2007 they released multiple versions SP1 SP2 R2 SP3 and then they released newer version of SCCM to in the year 2012 this was released in 2012 again they released multiple versions SP1 SP2 r2 okay but now microsoft stopped this naming convention rather than going with sp2 sp3 you know r2 they stopped taking this naming convention and they started with year and month so sccm 15 11 that was released in november 2015 <clears throat> sccm Microsoft promised that they will release SCCM with thrice a year. Every year they will release three versions of SCCM. Okay. So Feb 2016. SCCM 1606. That was released in June 2016. These are the historical background I'm giving. 1610. October 2016. So in the year 2016, they released three versions of SCCM. Now similarly, in the year 2017, Microsoft released three versions, 1702. That was released in Feb 2017. 1706. That was released in June 2017. 10. Released in October 2017. Right. And now again, Microsoft released 1802. And that's released in Feb 2016. Sorry, 18. And this is the current branch of SCCM. Any question, guys? Anyone in terms of historical background of SCCM? So starting from 1994 till 2018. 
Microsoft has released these versions. Uh, why uh, the Microsoft will re release every year the three versions? I think they will uh, update some patches on that one or? Yeah, they uh, mostly they update some patches, they bug fix the previous issues and also they add some features. Mm -hmm. right? So some suppose mobile device management. This was not there in SACM 2007. In 2012 is not there, but from SP2, they added mobile device management. Okay. okay. So every every uh, in every release, they add some features and uh, that features will be available uh, in the newer version of SACM. So uh, these updates are uh, on we update on the SCCM server or SCCM server. Okay. So how how do we know that uh, what patches we need to update in the organization? How do we know uh, we will get any uh, engineering Proper. documentation on the engineering side or as well? It is that is pretty straightforward and it depends on your requirement company's requirement suppose company needs some feature then you can upgrade that if that feature is not available in the current version of sscm you can upgrade it to the newer version right and that is pretty so, straightforward so, yeah okay so this comes on the vulnerabilities right to remediate the vulnerabilities of the current to patch right mm, yeah okay yes if your previous is previous uh, version of sscm is vulnerable and also if there was some issues in the previous version right yeah. and microsoft uh, microsoft identified that issue and they will release the newer version or they will release the hotfix for that for that particular uh, version of sscm so so how so do we know about the, so how do we know about the vulnerabilities and uh, how we get the data, the vulnerabilities of the SCCM server. So we need to, we, we get the data from the, I think, uh, some engineering team or as well, there uh, the, uh, will be a separate team on the, they are working on the vulnerabilities, I think. No, you you will be the engineering team, okay? okay. You, will have, you will have to keep reading the blog of Microsoft. You have mm -hmm. to keep yourself updated. And if you find something is outdated, vulnerable, you have to action accordingly. Not you don't need to depend on any any team. Okay. So how do we know about that one? Uh, we 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 will get any alerts on that one or? Yes, alert will be there. Okay. So so we can generate the report also on the SCM. How many SCM servers are there? and what the vulnerabilities are there how can we remediate and as well the, how uh, the license version has been expiring is there any chance well, to know about that one vulnerability report you will not get but mm -hmm. you will get you will definitely get how many uh, primary site server you have how many secondary site what is the current version you are running mm -hmm. and how and uh, you will also get a pop up to upgrade it to the later latest one okay okay, okay. thank you yeah. yeah so these are the historical background of sccm now the duration of the training okay is it is basically 30 hours training every day one and half hours session daily okay after this training if you would like to go for certification you need to give an exam that is 70 hyphen 703 this is sccm plus intune Previously, the exam was 243, but that is retired now. 
what Microsoft did is they added SCCM and Intune both club together. And this is the exam code. Previously, it was 243 and 696 for Intune, and 243 was for SCCM. So they club together both of them, and there's the uh, code for that. You need to score 700 out of 1000 to pass the exam. At least 700. Okay. <clears throat> and after taking this exam, you get MCTS. Okay. You get this MCTS. Uh, certification microsoft certified technology specialist microsoft uh, certified clear guys now related to opportunities Sorry, I'm very bad in this. Opportunities. Now, SCCM has more than 29% market share. Okay, so 29% you see all over the globe. So the companies all over the globe, you know, out of 100 com companies, you have 29 companies using SSM in their infrastructure. So there are thousands and thousands of companies or maybe in millions. So to, out of them, 29% are using SSM. Clear. And because of that, you get good number of vacancies and opportunities in SCCM. In US, average salary for Fifty dollar per hour. Right, Pramod? Uh, yes, yes. So that's the average salary. Okay. Twenty nine percent market share, and you have so many opportunities for SCCM. And <clears throat> For I don't know which location you are uh, in basically indeed and dice for US right Pramod? Ah uh, yeah So for SCCM vacancy you can go to indeed or dice website and verify yourself about SCCM administrator uh, vacancies. And you will find n number of vacancies there. Okay. Any question uh, ready? Ready, you there? Can't hear you, ready. Uh, I think some problem Sorry. I think some problem is there with my earphones. Okay. Now, um, any questions so far? No, everything is good for me. Okay. You are in India or in US? I'm in US. Okay. So it's like you completed your masters here, and you are searching for a job. Yes, exactly. Okay. Good. So. 
that is related to opportunities and the salary now let me take you to the SACM overview session what is SACM and why do we need SACM now SACM is basically enterprise device management solution you can manage your devices now let me give you the basic idea of SACM the capability of SACM what SACM can do okay can you yeah, go ahead. I just I want to tell you, can you make it a bigger? Than? Yeah. Is it good for you now? Yeah. Okay. Now, what SCCM can do? <clears throat> SCCM can do these basic um, stuff. Uh, color. I need to take the pen. Yeah. These basic capability, these are the basic capabilities of SACM. First, asset management. Don't worry about this 2012. It is applicable for, till the current branch, okay? From 2007 to 1802. 1802, so my slide is a little outdated, but the functionalities is still the same, okay? Asset minute, management. What is asset management? So suppose you have thousands and thousands of devices, thousands and thousands of users in your company. Those are assets. And in order to do the inventory of those users and devices, you cannot take a pen and paper and write it down, right? So rather, SACM can do the hardware and software inventory of your devices right whatever the hardware present so uh, throughout the globe in your company let's say you have 100000 devices all over the places in in china in in mumbai in hyderabad in new york in san francisco and all these location have like minimum 1000 devices right so for the inventory purpose whatever the hardware and software present on those devices SCCM is the best tool to give you those data right then asset intelligence A asset intelligence is for the categorization of applications software metering software metering is for the usage of application how many people are using one particular application SCCM will give you that data how many people are using um, this Google Chrome? How many people are using this uh, Skype on their computers? So software meeting will give you that data. Remote management. Using SCCM, you can remote into other devices. Okay. Then deployment. This section is the, ba is the you can say this is the core section of SCCM. Basically, SCCM is a deployment tool. So using SCCM, you can deploy applications to all the devices. Let's say you want to deploy Google Chrome to all the computers in your company and your company has 100,000 devices. So think for a moment if you need to install it manually to all those 100,000 devices. It will take ages you know you cannot imagine the time it will take to install manually on 100,000 devices so that is like next to impossible but in SCCM you can upload the application and you can shoot the application to all the devices and it will be installed instant uh, you know uh, to all the devices in one go or you can schedule the deployment when the deployment will happen then you can, they can then you can use SCCM to deploy the patches suppose your computers are outdated vulnerable your system do not have latest patches Microsoft keeps releasing keeps on releasing latest patches for all uh, operating systems so using SCCM you can make sure all the devices are up to date 
then you can deploy operating system through SCCM. Windows 7, Windows 10, Windows Server. You can use SCCM to deploy them. Content management. It contains, basically SCCM is a content management tool as well. So let's say you have two applications and both need one particular application as a prerequisite so it will copy only once it won't copy twice Actually, compliance setting yeah yeah we can deploy only the microsoft os or any os the linux and everything linux you can also deploy linux <laughs> I have a question too. Mm -hmm. uh, during the deployment, if I want to deploy uh, for 10 systems, uh, one software and the uh, rest of the systems, another software, can we do that? Yes, yes, you can. Okay. Compliance setting. Using SCCM, you can create a configuration and deploy it to all the devices, and that will evaluate whether the computer is compliant or not. Okay, you can set a criteria baseline that if my computer has this particular file, then that becomes compliant. If it does not have that file, then it becomes non-compliant. So SCCM is the one which can give you that data. Power management. Let's say after seven o'clock in the evening, nobody is there and there are thousands of thousands of devices. You probably do some power optimization so that it can consume less power during that non-peak hours when people are not available. So you can create a power policy and deploy it to the devices. So turn off the monitor after 7 p.m., shut down the computer, or put the computer in sleep mode so that your power consumption will be less during those time. Client health. Use SCCM is basically a a client and server uh, fa facing application. So SCCM keeps on checking the client healthiness. If the client is not reporting properly, if it is unhealthy, then it will give you a data. How many computers are healthy? How many, comp how many com clients are healthy? How many com clients are unhealthy? And based on the data, you can uh, you can define your action plan, what needs to be done. Reporting. Reporting is very much needed, right? You have hardware inventory, you have software inventory, software metering, there are so many things, and you wanna take it in the report, right? Using SCCM reporting functionality, you can take them in the report, in Excel or PowerPoint or PDF or Word document, and send it to your management. Thing. Using SCCM, you can monitor uh, the component, right? You can monitor the component of SCCM, like if the distribution point is working properly, if the software update point is working properly. There are multiple components of SCCM. You can monitor them. Security. In security, you have role-based administration. That means if you are good with patching, or application deployment, I will give you only that role. I am not going to give you the complete role. So in SCCM, you have multiple roles available. You can add users according to their expertise. So if user is, if, if that guy is good with operating system deployment, then we will give operating system deployment role only so that he does not have access to any other component in SCCM. Then you have NAP, Network Access Protection. So any device which is vulnerable, SCCM will find that out and give you the data of non-compliant computers. And automatically, SCCM will remove those devices from the regular LAN network and put it in the 
restricted LAN network so that it cannot communicate with other devices on the network. It will basically it will block the connection of that device which is vulnerable. Endpoint protection. So using SCCM you can deploy antivirus to all the devices and, and that antivirus will make will be there to protect your computers from viruses or any other threats which are available on the internet. One more thing is there in SCCM nowadays. Previously it was not there. MDM. What is MDM? Mobile device management. So using MDM functionality, you can manage your mobile devices. Android, iPhone, or Windows 10, Windows 8.1. <coughs> So let's say this is your Android, this one is your iPhone, this one is your Windows phone. You, you can manage your devices through SSM too. Clear guys? Yes, it is clear. Now we... How the admin role... So we need to assign a user how he wants to deploy the OS or other application, right? Uh, not user. Suppose you have you suppose you have one SCCM team, SCCM administrator team, and SCCM administrator team has a couple of roles and responsibility. So one guy is responsible for application deployment. So he will have only application deployment role in SCCM. One guy is uh, responsible for deployment of patches, you know, uh, software updates. So he will have software update roles. One guy is responsible for operating system role, operating system deployment. So we can assign operating system role to that guy so that every person will have its roles and responsibility defined and one person cannot have access to other components of SCCM if he does not have expertise on. Clear? So how would we know that about uh, if we join in an organization so what role we have uh, it's an uh, OS side as well as the application administration side I think. Yeah so based on your expertise suppose you are good with all these three roles you can get full administrator role in SSM. suppose you are only you only know the patching so you they will give you only patching role okay Clear? but in the training but in the training you you told right you will give only the uh, os uh, side as well as the application everything right? everything okay yeah okay. Okay, so these are the um, functionalities of SSM. So now let's talk about uh, the sites of SSM. So SSM basically has three sites. Central administration site, primary site, and secondary site. These sites are nothing but Windows servers. And on Windows server, we install SCCM and we make it a site whether you need a central administration site then on Windows Server we will install central administration site if you need primary site so we will install primary site on that Windows Server or secondary site we need we will install those things one primary one central administration site is capable of handling 400,000 devices all over the globe now it is 700,000 devices. The latest branch of SCCM, it can manage up to 700,000 devices all over the globe. So you see 700,000 becomes very big number, right? Primary site. Primary site is the core of SCCM. 
central administration site may or may not be available in SACM. Some company, you know, may, may or may not have central administration site. Some company may or may not have secondary site, but primary site will always be there. And one primary site can manage up to 100,000 devices. Now, suppose, I'll tell you, suppose you have one building. You are running a company in Houston, right? And Houston has 80,000 devices in that building. You want to manage all those devices, 80,000 devices in Houston. So what you can do, you can create a standalone primary site. And that standalone primary site will be able to manage your 80,000 devices. Clear? Now, you added some branch offices. Suppose after five years or after two years, you added some branch offices, right? Now, you have opened branch office in Seattle. Seattle has 5,000 devices and Boston has 3,000 devices. And you want to manage those devices as well, right? On the top, Houston. Houston will still be a primary site. So, and you have 80,000 devices already here. But you have added eight eight more thousand in Seattle, 5,000 in Boston, 3,000. So what do you do? You create a second primary. Primary is already there. You add secondary site in Boston and Seattle. So one secondary site here and one secondary site here. And this secondary site will be managing the devices in Seattle. This secondary site will be managing the devices in Boston. And these two will be reporting to primary site. <clears throat> Clear? Now you have a big organization and the number is increasing day by day. So let's say you currently you now have 150 thousand devices to manage <clears throat> 150,000 devices to manage you have 50,000 in America's region 50,000 in Europe region and 50,000 in Asia Pacific so basically you create three primary site in these region and you have secondary site here secondary site here secondary site here but to manage the primary site you need a central administration site so one central administration site will be there to manage the devices so on top you have cas cas is called central administration site And these are primary. This one is primary. This one is primary. And this one is primary. And these are secondary side. Clear, guys? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So basically, we have hum what? Um, central administration site right primary site and secondary site we discussed about now we have roles in SSCM multiple roles are available we call it SSCM site roles management point basically it does the communication between the devices and the server management point distribution point it contains your files software files application files patches your uh, operating system files uh, as and when the devices need it they can point fallback status point is nothing but if the one primary site one site is down it the devices can communicate with other devices other uh, site for high availability you have fallback status point asset intelligence synchronization this is for the categorization of application 
I'll discuss more in details when we go in the training. Okay. When we act actually go in the practical session. Reporting services point. This is to get the reports from SACM. From the sorry, from not from SACM, from the database. Okay. Endpoint protection. Endpoint protection is to to deploy antivirus to all the devices to make your computer um, protected from viruses and other threats. SMS provider is one of the roles which is taking the data from SACM and putting feeding in SQL database. Service connection point is basically to keep your SACM up to date and for mobile device management through Intune, Microsoft Intune. This is the one which helps you to manage your mobile devices, Android, iPhone, and other devices. To make your computer compliant, you know, patch all the devices, you need a software update point, an SCCM. These are the two roles to create a website for users. We call it self-service portal. User can go to that website and download the application themselves. State migration point. This is basically when you are migrating any user from one operating system to another operating system, Windows 7 to Windows 10. So it will capture the current settings of user and same setting will be applicable on the on the newer version of operating system when it is migrated. State validator point, it is not needed anymore. Okay, so I'm not going to discuss this. Now, what is the capability? What is the requirement for hardware requirement for SCCM primary site server? The hardware requirement, you need to have at least AMD or Intel processor, at least 1.4 gigabyte gigahertz processor speed minimum 2 gigabyte of ram and 50 gigabyte of hard disk space and you need a sql database server got it so you need to have these configuration on a windows server either windows server 2000 you can take windows server 2008 or you can take windows server 2008 r2 or you can take windows server 2012 or 12 r2 but on that server you need to have at least 1.4 gigahertz speed processor speed 2 gigabyte of ram 50 gigabyte of hard disk space and there should be one sql server now the lab when we create the lab so one will be your windows server this is your windows server this one is your windows server and there will be one more server that is also one windows server that is going to be this one is going to be your domain controller so domain this one is your sccm and this one is your da database the three servers we need for SCCM to function properly. This one is your SCCM. And this one is your domain controller. So DC, one server, Windows server. This another server is SCCM. And this is your database server. The three server we need. And one will be your client computer or Windows 7 or Windows 10 okay all will be connected to one LAN network so let's say this is a LAN network okay so your Windows 10 will be connected your Windows 7 will be connected here your domain will be connected to the same LAN network your SCCM and your database all should be joined to this LAN network Now there are two types of lab we set up. <clears throat> Either we go on cloud or we install locally. 
so if you are going lab setup local if you are going to install local lab setup that means configure all servers locally on on physical device physical computer so let's say you have a computer that computer should at least have 12 gb of ram quad core processor so either it is going to be pro processor either it is going to be amd or intel so hard disk at least 300 gb free space needed what else mm, that's it so for local lab setup <clears throat> you can you if you are going to install sccm lab on your local computer you need this kind of setup minimum this is the minimum requirement okay now if you don't have these setup then we can go on cloud on microsoft soft azure we will be having <clears throat> three servers there windows uh, domain controller second server is going to be sccm and third server is going to be database and we can have one more server one extra extra server so on microsoft azure portal let me take you there so this is your azure uh, portal wherein you have four servers here you see one is your in i'm in virtual machine section okay i have four servers active directory this one is domain controller database sccm and sccm prime secondary site this one is your primary site this one is your secondary site and all us all the servers are connected here so my this is my sccm console the i'm on sccm primary site server and this is my console where I can see all my devices. So Active Directory, Database, SCCM, SCCM Secondary Site. And this has um, these four major section, right? Using these sections, you can, you can do all the required things in SCCM. So first, Asset and Compliance, which contains your users devices device collection software deployment if you want to deploy something like say application you come here if you want to deploy your patches you come here if you want to deploy operating system you come here if you want to upgrade your windows 10 to the later version in the newer version of windows 10 you come here monitoring anything you want to monitor you know the you can come to this section anything you want to change okay in administration or you want to assign the roles to anyone you can do that from here in this section so that's about uh, cloud uh, setup okay but if you are if you are doing it locally then you will have to install one one application in local computer called vm where workstation so which i have done here vmware workstation that is installed locally on my this i have i am running a computer which has 16 gigabyte of ram and quad core processor so i have local setup as well here i can have my devices like this dc is your domain controller sccm is your sccm server database and one client computer windows 7 this kind of setup we have to create and all will be on the same LAN network. We will join them to the LAN network. 
and we'll do the practice everything is practical here we are not going to just run the ppt and and it's it's done no we will have to go with practical session every every session will be recorded and given that to you and after every session we give you assignment you see this is my i just finished day seven on the previous uh, batch I, uh, you know i am uh, there is one batch going on from 6 a.m in the morning to 7 30. so i'm on day seven now and every day i give assignments to all the students so so that you can also do the practical and uh, you can come back with a question and answer a question and we can address those questions in the next session so that's about all this demo session if you guys have any question you can ask uh, Kashit, in real time we need to work on the virtual side as well as our cloud side in real time basically in real time you have physical devices physical devices in the company so <clears throat> you don't need vmware workstation and you don't need cloud you have a physical service and physical service you will be managing through that server do we need to set up the database and domain servers uh, from scratch yes everything is going to be from scratch uh, i mean not now uh, in the office environment in the, like the production in the office, office, already they will build already the uh, yeah in the production DNS environment you will have a dns you will have domain controller everything will be there database will also be there mm -hmm. You just even though even sccm is also there you just have to go there and start doing your administrative task you know okay. when you go to when you go to a company you will see like this okay you okay. will see like this you will start managing from here but in lab we will set up the whole thing from scratch okay yeah? starting from domain starting from building the server putting domain controller joining all the devices to domain then installing database and then installing sccm okay yeah did you guys go get the course content no okay i'll forward the course content okay so you will receive that so it's completely end-to-end -end training uh, it is uh, aligned with certification okay based on Microsoft uh, certification so all the so, topics are covered so we need so we need to work on the cloud side or the virtual side in the class that depends that depends on your computer if your computer has if your computer is able to handle the load of the service we can go on mm -hmm. local no so, we need to go on the cloud side because our laptop is, I have only 6 TV. How about you, uh, Reddy? Yeah, I wish to go on cloud. Okay. Okay, so you both will be on cloud. No worries, we can go on cloud. The only, uh, I actually don't recommend, guy, uh, recommend to go on cloud because it gives you only 30 days trial. In 30 days, we will be able to practice and we'll be able to cover the training. But after 30 days, what will happen? You will have to set up the everything again. Or you can pay to Microsoft to continue the subscription. OK. But that's OK. <clears throat> so okay we, OK, we will discuss. OK, we, we will think and let you know, Tashi. Okay. Any go any more question guys? No question? Okay, so thank you for joining this session. I hope the session was informative. 
we'll meet again thank you bye bye yeah, bye guys bye, bye. thank you bye.